Banner versus SharePoint Task Web Part. Now, I hope everyone has got, I mean, ones who are using Office 365, they've gone across Planner. So probably I'll, I thought I'll do a video on Planner and what kind of benefits that we have using Planner versus SharePoint Tasks Web Part. I'll surely admit the fact that, you know, when Planner came out for the first time, I was forcing my customers to wait for a while before choosing it. And I was kind of conservative in terms of implementation and usually wait for the Microsoft products to come out being stable, bug free and mature enough before rolling out the entire organization. And I also belong to the formal project management arena and a hardcore fan of SharePoint Task Web Part and Microsoft Project. So with Planner, it's pretty different and uh, there are a few issues or kinks that need to be figured out and I feel many organizations might benefit from Planner and its current form and shape. So uh, what's Planner? So you can see it on my screen now. So all you need to do is click here and go to Planner. You should be finding out here or just click on view all my apps and you'll be able to find it. And Planner from Microsoft is an easy web-based task solution and it comes along with Office 365 and it's also integrated with the Office assets like Outlook Email, Office 365 Groups, OneDrive and of course Microsoft SharePoint. So um, as a title, you know, as a topic that I um, want to discuss with you now, how different is it from our SharePoint task web part? No, well, uh, SharePoint Task WebPod has been always the go-to task management app for people who manage tasks in Microsoft SharePoint. And it means that it has helped us a lot towards formal project management approach for task management. And good news is like, I mean, the good thing is that it can integrate with Microsoft Project and has the ability for setting task dependencies, ability for visualizing Gantt chart inside the Microsoft SharePoint. And the best part, you know, it can also set up the configuration of the task web as all consume time and the only problem is you know to have this thing working you'll have to set up a te SharePoint team site first plan out all the site web parts security page design and then finally you get to manage the project plan now in the case of planner you don't have all these kind of complexities and it's independent of uh, SharePoint sites and it's a complete standalone task manager so you don't need to for an upfront setup or a preparation if you need to manage a quick project or an assigning tasks to the users so I'm gonna go ahead with the app so this is the planner interface where you have a planner hub that's my tasks basically adding my own tasks and what are my plans here so I have different plans so I've set it up for the demo purpose so I have three plans over here one is team doc I have a share site and I have a share XT plan I'm gonna show you how to probably create a task in the Microsoft plans I'm just gonna click on one of them let's go ahead and see how it works like okay so this is uh, the team doc page I have the group of members over here and so there are different you know functionalities probably I'll be explaining to you one by one soon and let's go ahead and create one task so as you see here there's a plus button I just go ahead and click on it type the task name okay so let's I'm just calling a lead list for Mike I click select the due date so yeah so put it for ninth and yes I have to assign a user so yeah that's that's for my that's that's my task right so assign to myself there you go and I click on add set tasks that's it it's there as simple as that now in the case of SharePoint this is how it's gonna look like so I have to go and add a task name I have to click on start date due date and I have to do a kind of a lookup to assign what's the percentage the description predecessors so everything comes basically all this kind of features come into this picture um, not really bad right so this is how it is for SharePoint task web part and that's about creating a task in planner now what are the major components of 
a planner. So now planner has the major areas of planner are tasks, packets, and boards. Now that's how it's called. Task is nothing but you know the tasks that I have over here, right? These are all my tasks. Buckets is nothing but you know the whole thing over here. Like sales team update, that's a bucket. Webinar plans is a bucket. Doc 2.0 plan is a bucket, right? So tasks are items of several activities for an individual, similar to task task web part or a Microsoft project. Now here, if you see this task is very easy and it's limited to a few options like start and due dates and progress status, right? So I'm just gonna click on one of them and see how it looks like. Maybe I'll just go to one other one and show how it works. Okay, so I've created an example. So this is one of the tasks, right? So as you see here, I have that's me over here, so that's basically the sign person. So this task has been assigned to this person. You have the bucket, so which bucket it belongs to. What is the progress? So I have a North Star in progress and completed. When's the start date and the due date? And I have some subtasks or checklist, right? So I'll be using this checklist as my subtasks, right? So once it's done, I just go ahead and click over here and that's it, that's done. And I have a space for my description. And also, I'll be able to attach files from OneDrive and SharePoint and also put up a link. So that's one good thing I have here. Also, I can go ahead and click comments. So my comments all come over here. And also, I can track the task history. So that's one thing that I have. Similar to the version history in SharePoint task where part, basically. It's much more visual, right? That's how you can really see it more visually. And one important thing is that please know that you can only assign a task to one user at a time. So that's one, it's not a disadvantage. I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, Planner is coming up with more and more features. So right now, you, you'll be only able to assign to one user. Hopefully, you know, the multiple assigning feature should come up in the future. So that's about the tasks, right? And I can also go ahead and set up labels over here. I can also put in colors so I can identify them. So I put a red one here. Okay, so that's that. And the next one is nothing but buckets, right? So buckets is nothing but you'll be able to organize your tasks into separate categories, right? So now I have here, let's go ahead with something else here. Yeah, so I have a sales team update, uh, update. I have webinar plans, I have a doc 2.0 plan here, right? So I'll be able to organize my tasks into separate categories and also I'll be able to add more and more buckets, right? So I have an option to create new, new buckets. So just have a call name and then that's it. I can create a task under that. And it's nothing but you can separate tasks into logical groupings. And the next one is plan where I have plans as nothing but, you know, the buckets that actually belong to the plan, right? So plan is nothing but a separate project and every project has its own plan, task, and its own buckets. So all the plans can be accessed through a planner hub. That's what I clicked over here. So I get to see all my favorite plans and what are the, all the plans that I have. I just have to pin up, you know, which is my favorite plans here and shows up over there. So I have my favorite plans and I have my old plans here. Also, there are a couple of ways for users to use the task. Uh, the board view actually allows viewing of the entire task on the project plan organized into the bucket. So I'm just gonna click on team doc and so as you see here, it's the board view, right? Where the board view, I can see the entire updates over here, all the tasks, right? And also I forgot, you know, I just forgot, you know, these are the tasks which has been completed. So it, it it kind of hides over here. So if you click on show completed, you can see the task which has been completed. So it has a tick mark and also it's crossed over here. Also, I have the charts view. So click on charts. It shows a visual chart of tasks and they progress. So now I have seven tasks left and I have the members to whom it's been assigned. So 
the yellow shows not started the green is completed and two is late yeah i have to act them quickly so the red one shows that zero the blue one is actually in progress also let's go to the my task view now here it shows the task that has assigned to the user who's logged into the microsoft planner so i'm one of the users been logged in in microsoft planner so all my tasks come over here now now there's a categorization over here as well this is not started i have a lot, yeah i have a lot of tasks being pending and in progress is one and then I have completed tasks over here listed on my right hand side so now what's the final decision so do i have to start using microsoft planner or stick with sharepoint task web part well the choice depends on the following scenarios so if you're using microsoft planner make sure that you're managing small projects and when there's no requirement for managing resources or capacity there is no requirement for integration with microsoft project and if there is no requirement for integration or sync with outlook there's no requirement for setting up task dependencies and for projects where social collaboration is more important than formal project management methodology and for agile and scrum projects so that's where i'll be using my microsoft planner and what if I need to continue with my SharePoint task web part? So why should I be using that? Is it's simply because when I get large projects, I'll have to go with SharePoint task web part. And if there's a requirement for managing resources, capacity, costs, and baseline schedule, this is very important. When there's a requirement for setting up task dependencies, and when there's a requirement for integrating the Microsoft project, and if there's a requirement to sync tasks with Outlook, so that's where I'll be using my SharePoint task web part. So that's it. So I that's that's what I really want to discuss about. So the Microsoft Planner versus SharePoint task web part. So it's a fantastic tool that Microsoft has come up with. So, but you know, it it's still I'm I'm pretty sure that you know there'll be a lot of uh, enhancements coming soon. But nevertheless, you know, you can't forget your SharePoint task web part, right? We've been using it for a couple of, you know, quite some time. So all depends on what kind of nature of your work or your project. So that, that's how, you know, you need to switch, you know. So basically, if you have smaller projects, switch into Planner. And if you have the big ones, go with the SharePoint task web part. So that's it from my side. And thank you very much for watching this video. I strongly recommend to watch more of our videos from mydoc365.com slash videos. I repeat, mydoc365.com slash videos. So you can go ahead and, you know, visit this page and a lot of tutorials on SharePoint and some of our webinars recorded. So that's it. And thank you very much for watching and have a great day.